Hello and welcome to InvestorToday.ca. I'm your host, Dave Glover. InvestorToday.ca is brought to you in conjunction with RBL Communications, your online IR professionals. We're coming to you live from the World Resource Investment Conference. It's Monday, June 4th, and I'm standing here with Mickey Falp, the mercenary geologist. Mickey, always a pleasure to get always. an opportunity to speak with you. Now, one of the things that, that has come up, and you know, you and I have been doing a number of shows in, in the same sort of thing lately, but one of the things that's been coming out, and I heard this in New York as well, is how do American investors get into the Canadian exploration markets? Uh, it can be a little difficult. There's a couple of ways to do it. You can trade through discount brokers coming out of the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, but we'll get into this a little later. Uh, there's some difficulty in that realm. Or you can uh, get a Vancouver or a Toronto based broker, a brokerage house up right. here, which is the way I choose to do it. Mm -hmm. So I pay a full full commission brokerage fee for all my trades. Uh, to do that, you have to be a uh, qualified investor. So I think uh, the criteria is you've got to have net assets of a million dollars or more. Now, some retail investors won't make that criteria. Uh, so then they would uh, also have to trade through a discount broker in the States. The Toronto Venture and Toronto Stock Exchange listed companies mm -hmm. uh, generally also trade in the states uh, via the pink sheets. Right. The problem with that is you have a market maker on each end and and so you're paying uh, but and you end up with bid asks that are not as tight as what we right. uh, what you would have access to if you were trading in Canada so my preference even though I'm paying a full-fledged brokerage fee mm -hmm. of a hundred dollars a trade versus a discount broker at perhaps even ten dollars a trade is I have a broker understands this market he is able to buy and sell and save me a penny here or a penny there and when you're trading a, n a number of large uh, shares because these are often penny stocks mm -hmm. that adds up really fast so I feel like using a Canadian broker gives me an advantage I get a better bid ask I have a trader who understands the market and I'm a and not at the mercy of a low liquidity volume uh, trade in the U.S. that has usually a higher spread on the bid ask, with a market maker being paid on both ends of that. Well, as you know, I do a lot of investor relations for a number of small cap companies, and I would have to say two thirds of the calls I get on a weekly basis are from Americans. I have a gentleman who phones me from San Diego on a regular basis, and one of the things he said was that he was able to get into the into this market by going through TD Ameritrade, which is you know as a Canadian bank which mm -hmm. is operating in the United States. Mm -hmm. Is is that a route you think that that is accessible for a lot of other uh, investors? Well, I certainly would think it would be, and, and I I don't know that partic particular brokerage house, mm -hmm. but I imagine that's a discount broker. So if that's the case, then you're not going to have the, uh, the advice and the access to a broker who's going to give you some insights out of best trade and, and, and get the best deal for your money. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason that I tend not to do that. But that certainly is a legitimate way to do it, and a lot of Americans do that. It's it's generally not that hard to trade these stocks. Uh, of course, if you're a Canadian citizen living up here, I think you have somewhat of an advantage. Mm -hmm. I tend, by dealing with a Canadian broker with a U.S. subsidiary, uh, I feel like I get the best advantage I can get in mm -hmm. trading. So what do you think the big draw is then for American investors to get into the Canadian markets? Do they just see, is it just a, a, a boom country up here for them from their perspective? Well, I think uh, to, to, to use an old Doug Casey joke that uh, Canada is America light. So uh, the thing is, uh, the U.S. natural resource markets are traded on the bulletin board, and there's lots of problems with with some of those companies. It's mm -hmm. much easier because of lack of technical oversight uh, for people to run uh, deals that are not quite on the up and up, and in some cases outright scams. Right. So I won't touch companies that are that don't have a uh, Toronto Venture or a Toronto Stock Exchange listing. Uh, these are very high risk, high reward stocks. Uh, they're speculations. It's a bit gambling, but mm -hmm. if you do your own due diligence and and perhaps use some of, of the tricks of the trade that I've written about, you can learn how to do your own research and pick fundamentally strong stocks. You want to try those 
to buy those when they're undervalued and and unloved and unwanted and sell them once the market knows who they are. So right. I adopt a contrarian philosophy in all my trading. Well, with the markets the way they are, it seems as though everything's at fire sale prices right now. So uh, as I always like to do when, when I'm talking to Mickey, I always want to pick your ear and get an idea on, on, on what you think are, are the hot areas to play right now and, and what what companies, if any, you're, you're looking at yourself. Well, the hot area, I think, still is graphite. Right. Uh, and we talked about that previously. Uh, I'm involved with one company is sponsoring my website. I'm a fairly large shareholder. That's Flinders Resources. Another company that might be worth looking at right now would be Mawson Resources. Uh, again, a sponsor, and I'm a and I'm a significant shareholder uh, with an advanced uh, gold uranium play in. Um, in Finland, in northern Finland, and I've been there. It's uh, bonanza grades. They're just starting to come out with drill results right now. Well, you know, a couple of the companies I work with are up in the Yukon, and, you know, we already know that a lot of juniors don't have any money right now to proceed with exploration. Is Do you think the Yukon is still uh, an excited area for, for investors to be getting into? Well, I certainly think the Yukon, there will be a couple of gold mines come out of the Yukon. Now, it's likely to be a decade before that happens. There are lots of significant gold occurrences, and, in fact, I'm involved with a with a with uh, an explorer in the Yukon. That's Tarsus Resources, which is a process spec generator again a sponsor of my website now and significant shareholdings uh, but they uh, like all the entire market have been beaten up a bit but probably less than some but uh, but they've got some interesting prospects in the Yukon then they've also got a new Carlin style discovery in Mexico that's garnering some interest so that might be an idea for him for speculators to take a look at Tarsus resources at this stage well and the great thing about them as you point out they may be in the Yukon as well, but they're also in Mexico, so they've basically got year-round projects at this and, point. And that's important because you can only work in the Yukon for three or four months of the year for the most part, and where they are in Mexico, that's a year-round project. Now, you, you'll probably shut down during the summer monsoon season, which is going to come here uh, in about a month or so, but you know, it, it, essentially in Mexico you have a nine-month field season versus up north here, where a very short field season, and, mm -hmm. and the best time to work in Mexico is north North American winners, so so that a Mexican project combined with Yukon projects fits very well together. I think. Well, you're talking about a 12-month project at that point, whether they be in in Mexico or in uh, in Canada at that That's point. Right. So big area play still graphite. Uh, rare earths have they have they sort of moved off? Is that something that people aren't really looking at anymore right now? Well, I, I, the valuations have gone down considerably. I think what we saw with rare earths is is the bubble started to leak about a year ago, and now. Now we're down to the real legitimate companies, a few contenders. Luckily, we picked a couple of those contenders very early on and had phenomenal profits. Uh, but uh, those companies, uh, the one I'm still uh, is still a sponsor of my website would be Quest Rare Minerals, uh, coming out soon with a pre-feasibility study. So uh, what we have done is we've taken the 200 rare earth companies and we reduced those down to probably 10 that still still have a chance of being successful in this space. Well, one of the things I've heard recently, well, as recently as Friday, was that there's approximately 1,600 junior mar junior venture companies on the TSX right now, and with the markets being the way they are, we're going to see a lot of merging, we're going to see a lot of those companies, unfortunately, cease to exist. Uh, what do you think? We're going to end up with maybe seven, 800 companies left on the junior market? I would kind of welcome that, to tell you the truth, because there were, during the boom times, there were a lot of companies funded, uh, there was dollars being thrown everywhere. Mm -hmm. and some of that money uh, has been spent quite foolishly so I'd like to see the number of companies in this business considerably shrunk and where we can kind of start all over again and and see if we can't build a better mousetrap this time yeah, exactly. well as always I like to give Mickey the last word when we talk so Mickey one last last pitch if you will well I don't think the bottom is in yet but it will happen sometime this summer uh, I personally hope and expect uh, a better market after Labor Day. So at some point there will be fundamentally strong stocks that are going to bottom and those are the ones you want to target and be ready to go. You're not going to be able to pick the bottom but decide at what 
at what share price you want to own them, put in a bid now, sit back and wait and see if it gets filled. And eventually it'll come down to your price, hopefully. Well, maybe it will, maybe it won't. If it doesn't, then the risk-reward profile did, uh, was never met in your regard. So you just say move on and find the next one. So uh, there's not a stock out there that we have to own. And, uh, and investors should always remember that. You may want to own it. You don't have to own it. Okay? Well, I'm Dave Glover. This is InvestorToday.ca. I've had the great pleasure of speaking with Mickey Falp, who is the mercenary geologist. You can check out his website. The website again, Mickey? Mercenarygeologist.com. There you go. Check that out. There's a lot of great leads in there as well. And for those of you that are investing in the junior market, I wish you great luck this season. And we'll see you next time.